Start off by making sure that you do a challenge rift. To do that, go to your settings, change it to challenge rift, hit start, and then go in and get ready to start running your challenge rift. Make sure you do this after the season officially starts. You can claim your rewards in your mailbox in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. Next, choose game settings, go to hard, go to adventure mode, and start your game. Don't forget to hit F1 to set your pet. The pet will collect gold for you automatically. After you've completed your challenge rifts and started your game, make sure that you gamble with blood shards for your level 1 legendary. For the demon hunter, you're going to want to be gambling on wastes in order to get the hellcat waste card, which is used with your marauder and game set. For barbarian, you have a lot of good options actually. Uh, bracers I would look at first because both of these bracers are quite powerful. In addition, the LUT socks on the Barbarian are insanely good too with your set that you're getting at level 70. So I would probably start trying to get one of the bracers and then if you have enough blood shards left over, go over for boots for LUT socks and try to get either one of these bracers plus LUT socks and you'll be good to go. For Wizard, you're going to want to be rolling on Bracers, and the reason for that is Ashton Gar's Blood Bracers increase your shields by 75-100%. to 100%. You throw that in the cube, it's guaranteed 100%. Huge survivability boost to you, straight off the bat at 70. Very nice item to have. So Witch Doctor is kind of an interesting one. You can start off gambling for uh, offhands, and you can get Gazing Demise, which grants just a ton of damage on Spirit Barrage. It can actually be insanely useful while leveling up. The other way you could do is you could choose to hold back on gambling and not gamble at level 1. Gamble at 31 instead, and you can gamble on Helms. You can get a Quetzalcoatl, which will make your Locust Swarm and Haunt deal their damage in half the duration. For Monk, it's kind of a complicated question which one you want to go for. Uh, both of the boots are insanely good for sets and the end game. Um, so those, that's a solid attractive option right there. Um, but in my opinion, I think you should gamble for Bracers to start. This isn't really great for any end game sets, but it's good for leveling. Gungo Gear is absolutely nuts for some of the sets. And Pinto's Pride is great for the uh, Sun Wuko set that you're going to be running this season. So I would gamble for Bracers. And my other reason that I would gamble for Bracers first instead of Boots is because at level 70, your likelihood of getting the exact Bracer you want is much lower than your likelihood of getting the exact Boots you want, if you look at the chances. Um, so if I were to say, I want almost certain probability that I'm going to get these Boots 99%, I'm going to have to spend about 9.7k statistically to be almost certain that I'm going to get the particular boot I want. But in order to be sure I get the particular bracer I want, I'm going to need to spend 15,000, which is quite a bit lower probability of getting. Um, and that's just because there's so many more bracers than there are boots. Crusader is kind of an interesting one because there's a lot of really good options, a lot of really good legendaries here. But I def definitely, definitely recommend the Heart of Iron as your level 1 gamble. Just because your gift that you're getting is the thorn set, and this is an insanely powerful thorns item that you can put in your cube to enhance your ability to run that build straight off the bat. So definitely go with Heart of Iron here if you're playing Crusader to start off this season. For Necromancer, I would be gambling for gloves to get the Grasp of Essence. Uh, Corpse Explosion is really, really good as you're leveling up. And the gift that you're getting this season is Anarius, and there's some pretty solid builds that use Corpse Explosion uh, to help multiply damage of Anarius. So I would consider doing Grasp of Essence here. Now that you're starting to play, don't forget to make sure your pet's equipped once more. I want to remind you of that, it's very important. But go over to the followers and swap gear with the Templar. The DH is the only one who doesn't do this. Everyone else wants to make sure they steal his sword. The Templar may not be able to use your weapon, or you might not be able to use his shield, but make sure to take his stuff. Robin Blind. If you chose to play the DH instead, good on you. You're not going to rob that poor Templar. You're going to rob the Scoundrel instead. Get his bow. Your last step with your follower is to hire the Templar. After all, he's a good friend. We would never do anything bad to him. Now that you're all set with your Templar and your starting gear, it's time to get started getting some extra upgrades before we really start to grind. Look for boss bounties for Zul or Magda. 
If there aren't any boss bounties for either of them, that's okay. You can go kill either one that you want and try to get an item. What you're looking for is a nice yellow weapon to start off or a yellow piece of armor to start off. This will give you a nice little boost in your starting gearing and help you with your grind just a little bit more. This part you can skip if you want, but I would recommend doing it. Alright, now's where the fun actually begins. Time to start grinding. Go to Act 1, Halls of Agony 3, and start working on Chain Massacre bonus to level up. As long as you keep killing, you're going to get more and more multiplier. Try to keep it up as high as you can. You can get up to a 4 times multiplier. If you hit a dead end, make sure you leave the game right away and just reform it and go back into Halls of Agony. Rinse and repeat. If you're a necromancer, once you leave the game and restart, make sure to craft yourself a new scythe if you're at least level 5. You can get a nice two-handed yellow scythe at level 5 on a necro. Demon hunters will craft a bow at level 5 and a bow at level 8. At level 8 it's a two-handed bow. Both of them are blue. We don't get a yellow like those lucky necromancers. All the other classes will craft a one-handed blue axe at level 5 or a two-handed blue axe at level 8. Whatever is convenient for you when you leave your games and remake is what you should use. Continue running Halls of Agony 3 until you hit level 11. If you want to mix things up and add a little bit of spice, you can also do Fields of Misery or the Festering Woods. Once you hit level 11, you're going to want to be checking all the fence vendors in the different acts for plus damage rings and plus damage necks. If you can't find it, make sure you remake the game and keep doing this until you find plus damage rings and plus damage necks. At this point, you're going to want to decide if you're going to play Diablo 3 solo or with a group. If you decide to continue playing as a solo player, take note of anything that doesn't involve playing with a group. For actual leveling, instead of doing rifts, you will continue grinding Massacre bonus in those zones that we mentioned earlier. If you're playing with a group, whoever is the highest level person at this point in the game should start doing story mode and power through it until they get to Leoric. Everyone else will continue doing Massacre bonuses for just a little bit longer. You'll be grouping soon, I promise. Once your totally awesome runner gets you all the way up to Leoric, you'll join him and kill Leoric together. This will give you a free Leoric's crown, which will give you a massive boost to your leveling experience. In addition, you can cube it later to continue gaining the bonus all the way up to level 70. At this point, whoever is the highest level will be the runner, or you can choose to have the runner be whoever has the most movement speed or highest movement abilities. They will do a run to the ruins of Sashuan Chicken, I mean Sashuan, sorry, and they're going to try to get the Kunai's cube. Your group will group up with him once he's made it all the way to the cube, and your whole team can get the cube in order to cube your legendary effects that you got at level 1, as well as your Leoric crown later when you want to. Meanwhile, while your runner is looking for the cube, the rest of your party should be grouped up and doing rifts. I'd recommend starting on hard unless you had a few lucky legendary weapon drops early on. If you did have that, you might be able to boost the experience up to Torment 1 and get some good good grinding in. Otherwise, stick to hard. It's just more efficient that way. After you've got your cube and all of your powers cubed, go ahead and group up as 4 people and start doing rifts all the way up until level 40. Once you get to level 40, you're going to want to roll a two-handed level 70 axe. You're going to want to keep rolling these until you get CC in your secondary affix slot. The slot that is not the CC, you're going to want to re-roll into reduced level requirement. Go for the best reduced level requirement you can afford. If an item's starting to get too expensive and you still haven't gotten reduced level requirement, stop. If you hit 200,000 or more, don't roll it anymore. Just go and craft some more weapons and then re-roll those. It's a lot cheaper to recraft more weapons and get another secondary CC affix than it is to continue re-rolling one weapon and sink all of your money into it. At this point, you're in the home stretch. Your team has reduced level requirement weapons and things are much easier. This is a good time to bump up the difficulty into the torments for a little bit. Once things start getting harder, lower it back down to regular hard difficulty and grind out the last couple levels. Usually it starts getting harder around level 63 or 64, depending on other legendary drops that your team has had. You can also choose to do Massacre bonus grinding at this point in a Torment difficulty as well, if your team does not want to do any more rifts and you want to change a pace. Another option is you can do bounties as a group, and you can uh, try to farm for Borns or Canes, or, you know, just save them for level 70 and turn them in once you get 70 and have a chance at some very sweet rewards. It's up to you guys. Most groups usually just grind out the last bit in rifts as a group, but completely up to you, whatever you want to do. Alright, now you're 70, time to get started playing the game. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the guide. If you did, make sure you leave a like, favorite, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And either way, I want to say thank you guys for joining us. Leave comments down below. Are there any tips that you think I missed? Are there any that you know of that I don't? Please let me know. Did I get anything wrong? Please let me know that too. Anyway, thank you for your time, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye, YouTubes.